Hello, I am Fernanda Paiva, Hitchhiking Stars, bringing you astrological insights for the lunations, so for the new moons and the full moons. And today we're going to talk about eclipse season. So eclipse season has come and is upon us. And so let's talk about this new moon solar eclipse that's going to be happening on the 14th of October, 2023. So this new moon eclipse will be happening at 21 degrees Libra. And to be an eclipse, it means that the lunations will be happening near the, the lunar nodes as well. So we have that sun moon at 21 Libra conjoined, so very, very close to the south node of the moon at 24 degrees Libra as well. So they're very close together, which means this is, there are few, I mean, there are a few things here for us to unpack. First, let's talk about eclipse season a little bit. So eclipse season happens a few times um, during the year. So every year we have eclipse season. There's nothing to be scared of or um, see the doom approaching you. There's nothing like that. Um, however, there is definitely a strong release of energy. I believe that during lunations, especially the new moon and the full moon, they're like key moments on the lunar cycles where we find a big release or concentration of energy. And I think when we add an eclipse to that, then we have even a bigger amount of energy that's being released or that's being concentrated into a specific theme, a specific um, um, a specific pathway, let's put it that way, that the sign of the zodiac and the degree of that zodiac is also going to be giving us more clues about it so eclipse is always bringing that extra amount of energy now it's challenging to try and be too controlling with the energy of the eclipses so doing witchcraft or spells are usually uh, not really recommended because they are considered wild cards so we don't really know how that energy is gonna go really necessarily so Another thing that I want to tell you here is that eclipse for eclipse season, and this is this place in between new moon and the full moon eclipse, is important to be flexible, is important to navigate with these energies a little bit more. Get your surfing board, get yourself prepared to go with the wave in the best way that you can do, but to have that sense of flexibility and space so you allow things to move. You go with the movement. You don't resist too much. You don't hold back or you, you don't try to control too much as well. With that said, I also oftentimes find that eclipse season is good for us to observe. Sometimes the release of energy or the concentration of energy can be greater. But if you can observe it rather than react and be impulsive with it, that can be more productive. That can potentially be um, a little bit more life enhancing and go with the, the life that you want to build rather than being a victim of the strong energies around you. So by all means, be prepared. Get your crystals, get yourself together there to navigate these energies. But if you can observe what comes up during these cycles, all the better. Um, all the better because then you can use the insights you're going to achieve in a more conscious way. So you can use your consciousness to apply these insights into your life. All right. Another thing, just one last thing. Uh or a couple of things that I find really interesting to share here with you as well about eclipses is one, Bernadette Brady says that if we imagine eclipses to be a little bit like earthquakes, that is about the earth kind of rejiggling itself. And so if it hasn't done that for a while, it has to be all more dramatic. Eclipse season is a little bit the same in a way that it has to do with rejigging our lives and, and re-adapting ourselves to change, changing things in our lives. And so if we have been resisting change a lot longer, then that needs to be a bit more dramatic and more intense. Also, the last little bit I want to say before we get into the chart and talk about this uh, new moon eclipse in more detail, the other thing is, 
according to Bernadette Brady, which is a wonderful astrologer, and I love to be quoting her here, um, the solar eclipses, which are the new moons, in her observation, have something to do with our outer lives a little bit more, with events, with something new that's happening in our lives, and we can see. And the full moon um, eclipses, they are more connected with emotional, internal events. Now, mind you, that's always a little bit challenging to just pin symbolism down because astrological symbols they're alive and they're multival and there are so many layers to how these symbols are going to manifest so it's hard to give an exact precise one formula works for all but try to observe that in your life so the this new moon eclipse in, in theory will have something to do with a new beginning and an actual material new beginning around us in our lives all right so with all of that said let's talk a little bit about the symbolism and the the planets and the chart of this new moon eclipse so as i said new moon eclipse will be the sun and the moon at 21 degrees libra this degree for the sabian symbol which i always love to bring here as an exercise of our imagination is a child giving birds a drink at a fountain so there's something about relating to nature there's something about the imagery of a water of water and of a fountain as well that I like it very much so something that resonates with the process of healing as well we can think about water as a process of cleansing and healing we can also think about birds as new ideas and I think this is also reflected by the planetary configuration so during this new moon we'll also have mercury so the planet mercury will be at 17 degrees libra it is forming an exact opposition to chiron at 17 degrees aries and i feel that this could be the healing of ideas the new ideas being born or some new insights that we might get in touch that's also related to that uh, idea of a child the you know the image of innocence um, giving birds a drink at a fountain. So the birds, ideas, mercury, fountain, the healing process at Chiron. Now, if we go into that symbolism a little bit more, we also have to consider the lunar nodes that are in Aries and Libra. And this idea that we're learning and we're focusing on the wounds connected with our individuality as well. How can we be more independent or how can we be more interdependent rather than codependent and i think those could be some of the reflections we can have during this new moon some of the intentions that we can set under this new moon eclipse all about letting go of codependency of depending on another person's validation opinion um, asking other people what we should do not being decisive enough not taking the reins of our lives um, so there's something about grabbing life by the balls with this uh, new moon as well, potentially, uh, that could be represented there. So healing that sense of, okay, I'm going to make a decision, I'm going to take action, I'm going to do what I feel is the right thing to do, and it's still, be, uh, um, it's still being diplomatic. So we're not really chucking libra in the bin and and forgetting all the the positive sides of libra but we are letting go of the dark sides of libra and the dark sides of libra are related to people pleasing uh, manipulation in, uh, getting what you want in uh, indirectly rather than just being direct about what you want what you wish so these are some of the topics here with this new moon that you can set intention that you can um, put your energy forward uh, in order to manifest in your life more powerfully and in order to let go as well of these other tendencies of these shadowy sides represented by that south node in Libra. Now, the other interesting thing about this uh, full moon is that we will have um, Mercury and Venus in mutual reception, which means they are on each other's sign, they're working as a pair, as something about them working together which for me again gives another little clue on we will get in touch with values during this process we can set intentions about values we can think about our values we can feed 
our valleys a little bit. We can give a drink <laughs> to our valleys and, and, and to to nourish our values, right? So Mercury in Libra is ruled by Venus, which is in Virgo, which is then ruled by that Mercury. And that's what a mutual reception really means. So they're like in a close relationship to each other there as well. Um, and the other aspect that I want to bring up here as well is Mars. So planet Mars will be in Scorpio, a bit of one degree, 44 um, Scorpio, and it is forming a trine to Saturn. And I think, again, that Mars being the ruler of Chiron and the ruler of the, south, of the North Node in Aries as well, that Mars has an important role to play there. And in a trine to Saturn, it is sustaining this process. I feel that October will have an extra amount of healing going on. And this Mars trine Saturn in Pisces there with Saturn retrograde is also reflective of this process of being able to get deeper into our emotions, developing a stronger sense of emotional maturity, um, developing our mystical understandings as well as spending more energy on developing our knowledge, our esoteric knowledge perhaps, our knowledge of witchcraft and rituals as well. There's something about that. But but Scorpio is also very, very connected with healing, with rebirth. And so again, that sense of rebirth could be connected here and could be reflected by this Mars trying Saturn and something that we could take to the long haul as well because Mars and Saturn in a trine does resonate with long term with something that we can really sustain for a longer period of time so setting intentions during this new moon that will also include something that we want to continue doing that we want to bring into our lives that will be um They'll be staying with us for longer. That will be a sustained action. That's um, what I think when I see that Mars trying Saturn as well. It could be our spiritual practices as well. And, and really practicing. That means taking action with the spiritual beliefs that we have. And things like that. So this is it. Those are some of the insights that I can get from looking at the, um, at the, at the chart. Let me know in the comments how you feel, what do you think about all of this, and if you're preparing yourself for this eclipse season, all the best, and I hope you really embrace and bring some beautiful uh, positivity and energy and positive changes into your life, and I will be speaking to you soon. Bye-bye now.